And with that, Dom, thanks for joining us today. To talk about the future of partnerships in smart regions. Take it away, Dom. Thanks all. Yeah, thank you, Chris. What an awesome panel and what, a, what an inspiring summit. I mean, if, if today's content does not inspire you to act and to become involved, I really don't know what will. You know, I have this incredibly tough job, thanks, Lev, of having to wrap up the summit because if you're like me, you don't want this conversation to end. But luckily, I'm joined by an incredible group of leaders to provide some final thoughts. But before we turn it over to them, let me just quickly set the stage. You know, four years ago, we had this crazy idea that while everyone around the country was really discussing smart cities, that we here in Greater Phoenix, that we would create this idea of a nation's first smart region. You know, the impetus was this idea that collaboration would be our competitive advantage and that by working together, we could really start to solve those seemingly insurmountable civic challenges like traffic congestion, education, and yes, even the digital divide, you know, these challenges that don't start and stop at municipal boundaries. You know, the thought was that partnerships would be our driving force. So we officially launched the Connective in 2018, and it's become a model for regions around the country and really around the world. You know, if, if you all hang out, hang around with us till the end of the panel and the end of the summit, we're actually going to showcase the world premiere of our connected video, which tells the story in more detail. So please stay around to the very end. But you know what, I've talked enough. Let's get to the panel, which is all about partnerships. Partnerships for a smarter region. We only have 15 minutes for final thoughts. So I'll introduce the panel and then you'll get to know them throughout the conversation. So um, with me today, I'm joined by Susan Annable, Vice President of Public Affairs for the Southwest Regions for Cox Communications. I'm also joined by Ma Maggie Halbeck, Vice President for Public Sector for the Verizon Business Group. David Stevens, as you heard before, uh, Chief Strategic Advisor for SLED at Worldwide Technology. And of course, our fearless leader, Lev Gonick, CIO of ASU. So to my panelists, let's, let's kick this off. And you know, I thought Dr. Crow teed it up perfectly in his kickoff when he said, if you're not working with partners, you will fail. Wow, what a powerful statement. So to my panelists, how important are partnerships in building a thriving smart city ecosystem or smart region ecosystem. Maggie, how about I turn it over to you to go first? So, hey, I am coming to you from the Suns uh, practice facility here uh, where we have uh, lit up a 5G performance center. So I'm outside, sorry for the background noise. Um, but partnerships is really everything about co-innovation, collaboration and realizing that you can't develop really powerful and impactful solutions without having a lot of participation from your entire stakeholder uh, community. And so uh, Verizon has been really committed to education. We've been committed to STEM education, to technology, to bridging the digital divide. And what we're excited about is being able to be on the forefront of the types of innovations that will help us improve the way we live, work, and play, <laughs> like the Phoenix Suns. <laughs> yeah, that's that's great, Maggie. What what could be a more perfect example of not only the power of collaboration, but the power of teamwork, right? With the Phoenix Suns doing so well this year, we'll we'll keep hoping for the best for them. Susan Cox has been a foundational staple in our community for so long, supporting these smart city, smart region efforts from the very beginning. Talk to us about the importance of partnerships for Cox. Yeah, Dominic, I, and I agree. I think that, that what Dr. Crow said is absolutely right. There is no success without partnership because we all depend on each other to be able to create the ecosystem. You know, having the network providers that enable the world-class platform for delivery of smart technology. You know, we were so pleased a number of years ago to be named and to have as a partner the city of Phoenix uh, to be a smart gigabit community in this country. And that really helped kind of kick off for Cox, our focus on that area. Okay, we know we've got the gig enabled network in our communities. And how do we now help our communities take that to the next level and find solutions for those communities? So I see my elected official friends um, on the uh, in the seminar today, um, Jack Sellers, I see Corey Woods. We, we need those local leaders. We need commitment from the community, but we also need um, education community. We need the nonprofit community because without all of those groups collaborating together for smart solutions, um, no any one of us can make these things happen. And it overall just takes a tremendous and long-term commitment to do it. True words could have been said, Susan, and we appreciate your support from the very beginning. You're right, that Smart Gigabit Community Initiative is really what kickstarted 
a lot of the efforts here in the greater Phoenix region. So we really appreciate you and the Cox family for that support. David, I'm going to turn it over to you. You know, you, you've done a great job as, all the way back from your time at CIO of the county, now working with WWT, bringing WWT really to the forefront of these efforts to help us solve the digital divide. Talk to us about the importance of partnerships for WWT and why you're engaging so heavily here in the greater Phoenix region. Yeah, thank you, Don. What a what a phenomenal day so far. I've been able to listen in and out on some of these discussions throughout the day. Uh, I go back again early on to, to really you and, and Lev when I was transitioning out of public sector five years ago, this big dream for the Arizona region. And so it's hard not to get inspired when you have uh, leaders like all of these folks on this phone today wanting to solve this problem. Uh, but I agree, when you when you hear everybody talk today, it's about partnerships. And from my perspective, I'd say it's really a well-orchestrated coalition of people, right, that are focused on an outcome. And, and when you have a group of people who come together that want to actually drive results, uh, it's invigorating, right? I mean, it's an opportunity to uh, break down these walls and, and, and really sort out how do we solve these systemic challenges that are very difficult, right? But when you come together with uh, great companies and great universities like ASU uh, and you get local uh, cities and, and the county and state involved, you know, things can happen, but it has to be well orchestrated, I guess, is what I would say. <laughs> Always <laughs> some of the toughest parts, right, is trying to orchestrate the collaboration across so many different partners, so many different stakeholders. But hey, when you have a, the passion and the will, you, you can definitely get things done. And that's a perfect segue to Lev. I mean, Lev, this whole day really has been a testament to, to your view and your approach to partnerships. Talk to us about what it means, not only for ASU, but really for, for the future of this region. Well, again, I just wanna say, you know, thanks to, uh, you know, all of you and in particular to, to Maggie and to Susan and David, uh, because I think we're illustrating uh, through uh, the most precious resource we have, which is our time mm -hmm. uh, to actually be intentionally engaged uh, in uh, not only exchanging views, but hopefully building uh, this, the, uh, the, the, the connectivity, again, just, or to, again, the connective uh, tissues that will keep this region uh, focused in on uh, what is good for the region. Uh, I think that there are, the partnership piece of it is critically important for ASU uh, because we believe that there is amazing talent in the private sector, in the corporate sector. Uh, we know that uh, the corporations uh, in our region and nationally need our students as a pipeline for talent. And I think the idea of a career fair uh, is uh, maybe one of those other things that needs to get retired per se, because from day one, when a student arrives on campus, they should have exposure to and an opportunity to solve problems that corporations and communities need through collaboration and partnerships that are out there. And I think, again, today, uh, we shared a lot about the work that we're doing with Verizon. Susan and her colleagues at Cox have been hugely uh, important to us on our uh, collaborative uh, efforts. Uh, we have a collaboratory that, that focuses in uh, on transportation uh, ch uh, issues uh, in a way that, again, uh, helps us uh, tap both the smarts uh, of the corporate uh, R&D community, uh, the uh, product development community inside uh, the, co the companies, as well as this amazing wealth uh, of uh, an innovation that, that is our student base. I think we also feel, and I, uh, uh, you know, just sort of uh, pick up, I'll just to say also David, you know, had a chance to share the work that we're doing together, many, many projects, including the Afghani uh, Women uh, Scholars Refugee Program. Uh, I don't wanna miss that chance for those who weren't here at the beginning of the day when I made a shout out uh, there as well. But two last points here, Dom. One is, uh, it's all about impact. It's that impact at social scale. And that is not, there is no cookbook. There is no recipe for doing that. We are inventing that together. ASU is committed to doing that. Obviously, uh, those of you who were here, or perhaps you'll have a chance to hear Dr. Crow uh, when you watch uh, the opening session, um, on the store and forward or the video or any other time Dr. Crow speaks. Uh, hugely important to be having impact at social scale to solve the biggest challenges that we face as a human uh, race uh, here on the planet. And finally, we absolutely believe that companies, corporations that we're partnering with can do well by doing good. Mm. And the commitment that the companies uh, have in our partnerships 
uh, both indiv individually and by their corporate missions that we choose to work with, are committed to doing well by doing good by investing with us in education. Yeah, those are great points, Lev. And you know, I think you bring up a good point about you know partnerships forming the foundation and and with our partners like Verizon, like COTS, like WWT, we all can do well by doing good. So uh, I'm going to ask one more question before kind of putting our panelists on the spot. It kind of tees up, you know, where do you see the challenges or maybe the areas of improvement are for the future of di digital equi equity, specifically here in Greater Phoenix? And Susan, maybe I'll turn it over to you. But, you know, we've talked a lot about kind of the challenges facing the nation and also facing Arizona throughout today. But what are maybe some areas of improvement do you see in Greater Phoenix for digital equity in the future? Yeah, a great question. And, you know, Cox has had a long time commitment to digital equity and inclusion through our Connect Compete program and our innovation labs and tech centers at the Boys and Girls Clubs and now trying to help um, the, um, the, the ability for folks to be able to connect to these federally subsidized internet offers that are out there. And I think the biggest um, challenge, you know, that we've seen is that as a provider, we can put these opportunities forward for connectivity uh, through different solutions, but the trusted partners in the community are teachers and school districts and elected officials and um, nonprofit organizations like Common Sense, who I see in the meeting today too, that when those people talk about these opportunities, people have a trust level with them that frankly, and I get this, a corporation doesn't have, you know, it, you know, there's a little bit of, you know, rightful cynicism when a company says, hey, we've got this, this offer where you can get your $30 a month um, internet service with our company that we've reduced paid for by the government. And so there's a barrier and a gap there that we need help uh, trying to get that message out there. So I think that's, you know, that's, that's a big piece of it. I would also say that understanding what the barriers to adoption are, um, for example, you know, Cox, we're in front of 2.7 million homes and businesses in the state of Arizona. We can service 70% of the state's population, but some of the reasons that we're not able to get people connected um, stem from um, housing insecurity, stem from cultural barriers, um, stem from age barriers. And so that's another place of opportunity that, you know, we, we, we are looking for partnership. How do we, how do we get to those, those folks that they may have a connection in front of the door, they may have a computer in the home even, um, how do we get to those? Yeah, great point, Susan. David, what about you from the WWT's perspective, areas of improvement for digital equity in the region? Yeah, I mean, I, I agree a lot with what uh, Susan said, but I would say uh, we heard it also throughout the uh, discussion today that that trust, right? Uh, really that trusted partnership coming together uh, to come out and make this kind of an impact is one component of it. Um, additionally, uh, just really the complexity of the funding, right? I mean, I think that stymies a lot of people. And so to, for all of us to wrap our hands around that in such a way that we, we know that the funds exist, but to free them up in such a way that we can actually start, um, you know, putting the shovels on the ground right now, uh, which is possible. But I think working through the complexities of the funding and then perhaps thirdly, you know, working on the policy component of it, right, which is an ongoing discussion. I get that. But if you bring the trust, if you bring the policy decisions together and you bring the clarity on the funding, um, this partnership, this coalition can absolutely start making an impact today. Yeah. And it is in some cases. Just don't, don't hear me wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, completely. And Maggie, what about you from the Verizon perspective? Areas of yeah. improvement. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we're working hard to make sure that the uh, distance learning does not have a negative stereotype. Um, a lot of school districts were ill prepared for virtual learning. But for those school districts that already had embraced uh, uh, technologies that allowed students to do their work from anywhere, they were far more uh, successful in student outcomes during the pandemic. And so what we would like to see is a continued focus on recognizing that students want to be able to do their work where they choose to do it, on their own time, in their own venues, with their own schoolmates. It should not have to be restricted to the four walls of a classroom. And so part of our focus and mission is to demonstrate this need for ubiquitous access mm -hmm. and to give students and teachers access to the digital liter literacy that they need in order to be successful in these settings so that 
they have the ability to be more independent learners and more exploratory learners um, as well. Uh, that actually helps uh, the students actually embrace and own more of their uh, education. Um, I, I think uh, we all owe it to everyone who has gone through the past two years to make sure that we don't step backwards, uh, but that we use this as an opportunity to spring forward and uh, learn forward uh, to make our, our students and our teachers uh, more successful. So that's, well, that's really what we're focused on. That's great, Maggie, and I love that idea of learn forward. Okay, so last last question to put you all on the spot. Um, you know, we kind of revolutionized the country when we had this idea of a smart region about three, four years ago. We think we're once again going to kind of revolutionize and transform the way regions look at digital equity through the newly established digital equity institutes led by Aaron Carr Jordan at ASU. Um, we're really excited about the partnerships. It's this idea of being a do tank. Let's talk about it, but then let's go out and let's do something about it together through collaborations. And of course, collaboration takes partnership. So my last question to put all my panelists on the spot, what is one thing you think your organization can bring to the table this year to really help us eradicate the homework gap and close the digital divide in this region? And, and not to put anyone on the spot first, but Maggie, because of the announcement of the Innovation Center with Verizon, uh, just we'll throw it over to you first. Yeah, so part of what we're so excited about with ASU and our partnership is not only the relationship we have with ASU, but the relationship that ASU then has with school districts across the country. Um, helping school districts who might want access to teaching Latin or to teaching some other kind of language that their school district doesn't have the funding to actually source themselves. Those examples are how you get into these force multipliers. And I'm super excited about the upcoming jam um, in February, where we have the ability for students to start innovating on a 5G and mech enabled environment. And what's really exciting is to watch what happens when students have an unfettered kind of playground to really focus on things like climate change, focus on things like poverty, focus on things like bridging at digital equity and digital inclusion and making sure that they are part of the solution. Um, and so we're really excited about that. And we continue to be invested in not only the Phoenix market, but also uh, across the nation, many of our uh, cities and, and townships. Uh, so thank you, uh, Dominic. I really, really appreciate this session. I appreciate you, Maggie. David, over to you, one thing. Yeah, I mean, briefly, uh, this is an alignment with our culture, you know, this desire to make a new world happen. We've heard we talked about that before. And so I think our ability to jump in and execute immediately, like you said, to do uh, is significant. And you look at the capabilities with supply chain and, you know, uh, integration centers and the ability to run large programs. It's a huge contributor to get to these outcomes that we're talking about, connectivity, adoption, literacy, telemedicine, on and on and on. Awesome. Thank you, David. And Susan, before Lev's last comments. So I'll, I'll make mine a hybrid so I get two, but it's really <laughs> continuing to drive that connectivity solution that Cox has. And now where we have more than one solution that we can put out there, um, but also looking to expand our networks. We're looking for creative solutions and partners to find the right ways to get to some of those unserved and unserved, underserved areas that we know are so critical to getting everybody on and connected. So we do have a commitment to looking for very strategic partnerships to get to some of those expansion areas that we know need service. So that, that's, that's our commitment. Awesome. Thank you all again. Appreciate the commitment to, to the region and to this effort of digital equity. Lev. Over to you, uh, ASU is already so heavily involved, but maybe what, you know, one thing ASU is focused on and then please provide us some, some closing remarks for the entire summit. Just do it all in one, if you don't mind, Dom, just to, uh, <laughs> again, thank everybody. ASU, I hope to all who are here is all in. Uh, we are all in on connectivity. We're all in on literacy. We're all in on meeting people where they are and we're all in on trying to build trust. It's not something we take for granted. It's something we work on every day. And we may not be perfect, but we are certainly committed to it. Um, I will simply try to uh, close by channeling Larry Irving, who uh, gave us our midday uh, keynote, uh, where he implored us to dream big, uh, to always dream big. And on digital equity issues, uh, ASU is prepared uh, 
to both uh, lay down new track uh, where folks have never been before uh, and to partner with everyone in the community on work that they are doing uh, to advance uh, their own local uh, or in the case of uh, the tribal nations, the uh, nations that are working on connecting uh, their communities. We thank you for the opportunity uh, to partner with you. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, Dom, um, I don't know if you want to go ahead and, and stream uh, the little video piece, but I think it's teed up uh, as a takeaway and uh, thanks to everybody. Yep, thank you, Lev. Thank you everyone again for joining. Uh, please take the survey. And again, we're all in here in Greater Phoenix.